Look, I get it. Plenty of people don't like IEMs. I understand that in-ear monitors are not comfortable for some people. And there are those who simply do not see the benefit of an IEM over standard headphones. I also admit that there are plenty of overhyped in-ear monitors. We are conditioned to expect that all IEMs sound alike, and often wonder why we need to spend money on in-ear monitors when our smartphones come with earbuds. I don't have answers for your concerns, but I gotta be straight up with you. The Linsole Schuer tape is bloody unique, and at $130, it's actually something worth considering. Schuer says that the tape has 10mm electrostatic drivers. They say that the driver is custom made, that this design helps provide detail and smooth transition of frequencies. The tape might appear strange. Well, the design concept is supposed to evoke portable tape players. The IEM is made of metal, feels robust, and in person looks pretty stellar. The red accents on the IEM are minimal. The anodized black aluminum looks more black-gray in person than in the photos. I bought the tape two months ago. I did that mostly out of curiosity. I've used this IEM regularly. While working out, in the office, on my walks, I have stuffed the IEMs in my pocket, my bag, and bumped it around on the counter. The metal housing still looks pristine. The paint has not chipped. There is not a mark on the IEMs. Of course, your mileage will vary depending on how careful you are with your equipment. Physically, I can't find anything to gripe over. The Schuer tape is approximately the same size as any other IEM. Compared to my Andromedas, for example, the Schuer is just a little bit smaller in size. One thing I'm a bit confused about is the packaging. The outer orange box is strange and unique, which is fine, but the case inside is rather small for the IEMs and its accessories. You have to package the IEM and cable in just the right way or the case won't close. Frankly, I prefer a carrying pouch. For example, the pouch that Eco includes with their in-ear monitor is perfect. I've lost count how many IEMs I have. From the Camphor Audio Andromeda to cheap $20 earbuds, I have listened to a wide gamut of IEMs. Just to name a few, the Andromeda, of course, the Noble Audio Django, the Heides MS4, and the Fio FH5. These have different sound characters. The MS4 has thick bass and an intimate soundstage. The FH5 is fairly neutral but with a slight treble spike. The Django has a slightly elevated bass and rolled off treble. The Andromeda are as neutral as can be. And the $130 Schuer tape sounds completely different from all of these. Overall, the tape has a slightly elevated bass response. Compared to the Heidi's MS4, the tape is cleaner and clearer in the bass frequency. The MS4 has a thick bass where sub bass and mid bass get smashed together. That muddy bass is certainly nice on some type of music, but not all. Indeed, the MS4 does not do particularly well with orchestral pieces. On the other hand, the tape has a fairly controlled bass. If you're tired of lean bass from your IEMs or bass that is just too emphasized, the tape seems to offer a good middle ground. There is a thump in the mid bass that does not overwhelm the mids. The sub bass is less emphasized in the mid bass but still present. The mids are clear but recessed. On our imaginary soundstage, the mids appear about two steps behind all the instruments. This might be a problem for a lot of headphones and IEMs, but not for the tape. The bass does not interact with the mids, so even though the mids are not emphasized like the basses, the mids still come out undistorted and unmuddled. This was truly surprising. The treble, by the way, is rolled off, but there is still some sparkle and energy. The treble does not get ear piercing. I'd describe it as smooth. If you are treble sensitive, the tape should not bother you. There are two things that jump out when I crank up the volume. First, the bass is fast with a mid-bass emphasis. Second, the clarity and detail is apparent throughout the frequency range. The tape is not a bass cannon. It is also not the most detailed in-ear monitor I've ever heard, but the clarity on the vocals, the detail in the bass and mids and fast, smooth transitions within the frequency range is quite unique. I've listened to a wide swath of songs with the tape, but since we are talking about an IEM that has the inspiration of tape decks from the 80s and 90s, I figured we should listen to songs by the King of Pop from the 80s and 90s. That's right, I listened to the best of Michael Jackson. 
The song that really captures the fun and sonic character of the tape, I think, is Black or White. I played this song as a flak file from my Shanling M6 using the 2.5mm balanced connection. I had volume at 60%. I mean, the tape is 32 ohms. I used some foam ear tips I had lying around. At the start of the song, you can hear a guitar riff. That riff sounds like it's being played from cheap speakers, which is exactly the way that it was meant to be heard. Then, 25 seconds into the song, you can hear banging on a door. The first time I heard this with the Shure tape, I thought someone was literally banging on my door. That banging sounded so real it took me a second for my brain to catch up to speed. The argument between the father and son in the song has so much detail it was surprising to hear. In the song, you, the listener, are supposed to be in the room with the child listening to this song on the tape player. The father is outside banging on the door. The father's voice actually sounds like it's several feet away and on the other side of a closed door. There's a bit of an echo effect when he shouts. There's also a neat stereo effect. Whereas the son sounds like he's right in front of you, the father sounds like his voice is trailing down a narrow hallway. Most of this has to do with the masterful recording of the song, but you have to give credit to the Shure tape for producing so much detail and depth. Then, when Michael Jackson's song actually starts, when his voice chimes in, you could hear the energy. He sounds a few feet behind the instruments, which is, I know, totally not how he's supposed to sound, but the detail in the guitar, drums, and his voice still shine through. I kept expecting Michael's voice to get overshadowed by the bass, but it never did. I could hear the bass slam at the same time I heard the clarity of the electric guitars. There was a hard separation between the vocalist and the instruments. Then, when I switched the Thriller, I couldn't stop bobbing my head. The bass in Thriller sounds fast but is more elevated than the mids. Nevertheless, the vocals still had detail and clarity. Once again, the mids were recessed in comparison to the bass, but not muddy. You can hear the synth mix into the song. That synth instrument cuts through the bass and the mids without causing any distortion. I have to be honest. I used to listen to this song all the time. I had a cassette tape of Michael's hits and Thriller was naturally on it. I used to blare that song on my tape player. And hearing this song again on the Shure tape brought back pleasant memories. There was a combination of reasons for this, I think. First, the tape has fast, tight bass response. There is excellent separation between frequencies. The mids, though recessed, still retain detail and clarity. The treble is rolled off, but there is, once again, clarity that adds just a bit of sparkle. And then, second, there's the sound stage. It is average to above average. And that depth. The tape has depth and verticality, the type that is hard to find on full-size headphones, let alone in-ear monitors. If a song is recorded and mixed to have various instruments and vocalists in different places, rest assured, the tape will probably recreate that. For example, in Michael Jackson's song, Wanna Be Startin' Something, there are multiple vocalists that chime in. They sound separate and different from Michael. Those vocalists sing in the left ear, then the right ear. Then. At 1 minute and 46 seconds into the song, there is an amazing detail in depth and resolution. That is, a female vocalist sings directly from behind my right ear and into my ear. She sounds crystal clear, and I actually had the impression she was leaning and speaking into my ear canal. Look, I know I sound as if I really like the Shure tape. And the reason is because I really like the Shure tape. The tape is not a neutral in-ear monitor. It's not the most detailed. It doesn't have the boomiest bass. It does not have treble extension, but that's precisely why it is worth considering. With IEM manufacturers tripping over themselves to sound neutral or mimic the success of the Tin Hi-Fi IEMs, it is refreshing to hear an IEM that does something different. A few weeks ago, I unboxed the BeQuez Spring 1. I told you that in-ear monitor is very smooth, and that still remains true. The tape, in comparison, is not smooth. The tape renders excellent detail that the Spring 1 just steamrolls over. The two IEMs don't sound alike, and that's a good thing. The Shure tape embodies the lyrics of Michael Jackson's song, Will You Be There? If you need a fun-sounding IEM to carry you through the day, the tape is there. Look, I know, the tape is not for everyone. Those who like neutral sound and don't want to try something different, the tape likely won't meet your approval. 
and those who want base boominess should look elsewhere, for example the Heidi's MS4. But those who want fast, tight, slightly elevated bass, clarity, soundstage and depth, and gentle treble, the tape is an excellent option. Honestly, it has been a long time since I had this much fun listening to an in-ear monitor or headphone while writing a review. The tape is going to remain in my collection. Like the Sendi Ava, the AudioQuest Nighthawk, and the original Odyssey LCD2, the tape has uniqueness that I appreciate.